The neighborhood that I grew up in and the youth group Jack grew up in were both known to occasionally host events called progressive dinners, where each course of dinner was served at a different participant's home to keep the party moving from location to location all evening. On our most recent trip to Orlando, we stayed at one of the premier hotels at Universal Orlando Resort. The three premier hotels are the most expensive hotels at the resort, but they come with the most perks. So while we stayed at one, we spent one evening having a progressive dinner, enjoying appetizers at one hotel, then entrees at another, then dessert at the third premier hotel, all to tour the properties to see what each was like. And we're going to show you that tour and that meal in this video. Our visit was in December 2021, so you'll notice Christmas decorations up that won't be there most of the year. All three hotels are connected to each other and to Universal's City Walk and theme parks by meandering walking paths and by a free water taxi service. Our first stop is Lowe's Royal Pacific Hotel for some appetizers. But first, a tour around the property. The Royal Pacific is themed to look like an exotic South Seas paradise. This is Universal's answer to the Polynesian Resort at Walt Disney World. In fact, Disney recently permanently canceled their popular Spirit of Aloha Luau at the Polynesian to build more DVC villas. But Universal continues to host a luau at Royal Pacific every Saturday evening. You can enjoy this separate ticket event featuring authentic Polynesian food and entertainment. All of these premier hotels we will look at today have a really nice pool area. And one perk of staying at Universal Hotels is that with only two exceptions, if you stay on Universal property, you can visit any of the resort pools, even if you're staying at a different resort. The exceptions are if you're staying at the two value resorts, Endless Summer Dockside or Endless Summer Surfside. Those least expensive hotels do not have pool hopping perks. Each resort also has fitness facilities and arcades. The Royal Pacific featured many dining options, including Orchid Lounge, a sushi bar that's open in the evening, or Island's Dining Room, which offers Pan-Asian cuisine. Our options were limited as we started this hotel tour a bit before dinner time, so many of these restaurants at this hotel weren't open yet because they didn't open until 5 for dinner. So it did limit where we could eat here at Royal Pacific as we were resort hopping on this December afternoon. So to start our meal, we had appetizers at Jake's American Bar. This place has a backstory about a fictional South Sea explorer whose plane disappeared. Though if you look close enough, you will see it on the water taxi ride into the resort. Apparently, he opened an American-themed bar after his plane crash-landed on an island. I tried a cocktail here called the Cocojito, featuring Bacardi Cocoa Rum, pineapple, mint, lime, and simple syrup. It was really refreshing. We could tell we were in Orlando because this drink was $16. We tested out three appetizers here. The first one was homemade pretzel rods with tangy mustard and four cheese fondue for $9. These soft pretzel sticks turned out to be Jack's favorite. We also got an order of Jake's cheese fries, which came with cheddar cheese fondue sauce, pico de gallo, and jalapenos for $8. We both liked these pretty well. Then my favorite of the appetizers was the Mediterranean platter, which featured roasted bell pepper hummus, onion salad, cucumbers, marinated olives, roasted garlic, feta cheese, radish slices, and pita bread for $18. We really liked the vibe of this restaurant and the entire hotel as well.
So then it was back to the water taxi to head off for our entree. The water taxi is a great transportation perk for customers visiting the premier hotels because you go through a security checkpoint before getting on the water taxi. If you drive to Universal yourself, you have to go through a security line, which, depending on what time of day you show up, could have a huge crowd. But whenever we got on the water taxi, there was never a very long wait to get through security and onto a boat. You will have to go through a security checkpoint one way or another, no matter how you arrive at the park, so. The only waits we experienced at the boat docks was waiting for the next water taxi to arrive. A new boat seemed to show up about once every 15 minutes. By the way, if you're enjoying this progressive dinner and resort tour, please click the thumbs up to register your positive vibes with the algorithm. We appreciate your support. The next hotel on our tour is Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel. It is themed to the seaside village of Portofino, Italy. We're not going to show you much of this one today, though, because this is the hotel we actually stayed at for the universal leg of our December trip. We're going to be putting out a full resort tour, including a room tour, as well as a review of our experience at Portofino Bay in our next video. So go ahead and click the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when that video gets released or escapes. Portofino Bay has several nice fine dining experiences, including Mama Della's Ristorante featuring an authentic Italian cuisine and Bice Ristorante featuring Northern Italian cuisine, as well as the quick service Sal's Market, which sells pizza, sandwiches, and grab and go food items. And there's also a bar named The Thirsty Fish. We got entrees at a casual full-service restaurant called Trattoria del Porto. It's open for a breakfast buffet and serves Italian cuisine for lunch and dinner. We started with complimentary bread service. Then Jack tried a cocktail at this restaurant. It was the Naples Sunrise featuring Frangelico, Tuaca, orange juice, and cream for $15. He loved this drink. It tasted a bit reminiscent of a dreamsicle, but with alcohol, of course. Jack ordered the salmon with Parmesan crust, lemon cream sauce, and fettuccine with a baby carrot or two mixed in for $32. I got the grilled beef tenderloin with a red wine demi-glaze with parsley and Parmesan roasted potatoes, jumbo asparagus, and a baby carrot for $36. The food here was absolutely delicious and we both enjoyed our meals, but in checking the current menus as we prepared to put these videos out, neither of these exact entrees is currently on their menu. They do have a salmon dish and a beef dish that both sound good and are similarly priced, but they're not the exact dishes that we ate here in December. And then we head back to the water taxi to get to our final destination. It's important to note that the water taxi will take you to City Walk, the shopping and dining and entertainment district, which includes the entrances to the resort's two main theme parks, Universal Studios Orlando and Islands of Adventure. But if you want to go to the resort's water park, Volcano Bay, you'll need to take a shuttle bus from your resort. None of these three premier resorts are close enough to walk to Volcano Bay. That brings us to our final of the three premier Universal Resorts, the Hard Rock Hotel, where they say you can live like a rock star. Though I'm pretty sure you'll get a large invoice at the end of your stay if you leave your room looking like a rock star had just stayed in it. The architecture is a California mission style design. There's music memorabilia all over the place. Famous rockers of long ago and from modern days have their pictures, their clothes, their albums, their guitars hanging on the walls here. Even the Christmas tree decorations were music themed.
The pool features underwater music, a nice touch, even if it is of questionable usefulness. The restaurants you can check out here include The Kitchen, a diner-themed restaurant serving American favorites. As well as The Palm, an Orlando location of a famous Manhattan steakhouse. There's also a bar called Velvet. We cheated here a little. In our defense, we were pretty full after eating the two previous courses, but the gimmick of this video doesn't work if we didn't eat dessert somewhere on site. So even though we were too stuffed to go to one of the sit-down restaurants, we went downstairs to Emac and Bolio's Marketplace. This is the Orlando location of a Boston-based ice cream chain. So we bought some ice cream and took it up to the lobby to enjoy it surrounded by rock history. Alice got one scoop of lemon sorbet in a cup for $6. I ordered one scoop of grasshopper pie flavor, which was mint chocolate chip with some Oreo pieces mixed in. I got my scoop in a waffle cone. The scoop was also $6, and I paid an extra dollar for the waffle cone. The ice cream was delicious, though I couldn't stop from thinking about how we could have gotten a gallon of ice cream at the store for less than the cost of one scoop each here. I understand, though, that money spent on vacation and calories consumed on vacation don't count, so I guess it's all good. Hard Rock was our least favorite of the three hotels that we toured. It was still very nice, and we do love music, so it was cool seeing all the memorabilia, but it just didn't have the same luxury hotel vibe as the other two. If you love rock music, then this might be your favorite, but the other two, themed to faraway regions of the world, had more of a relaxing yet exotic vacation feel. And since all three of these hotels rent rooms between $300 a night up to $500 a night, depending on what time of year you stay there, that tranquil feeling is pretty important to us. The cost was worth it to us though, because all three of these hotels provide guests with Universal Express Unlimited, allowing you to skip the lines at most popular theme park rides for each day of your stay, from the day you check in to the day you check out. The less expensive Universal hotels do not include that perk, and paying for it out of pocket is over $100 per person per day. Royal Pacific is our second favorite of the three resorts, but our favorite was the one that we stayed in, Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel. Check out our next video in a few days to find out what we loved about it. Click the links at the end of this video for other Orlando theme park hotel content. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.